Hello, I'm Gordon Farragher and I work for Kaplan Financial. If you're preparing for exams, you're going to be spending quite a bit of time studying on your own. To give yourself the best possible chance of success, you need to make sure you're using your time as efficiently as possible. So I've put together a few little hints to try and help you avoid wasting time and thereby give you the best possible chance of passing those exams. The secret to exam success can be broken down into a number of different facets, which I've tried to do on this little pie chart. I'm not saying the percentages are accurate or scientifically derived, but they do give you a reasonable guide. Firstly, you've got to decide when and where to study, and it's not perhaps not as important as some other things, but it will make a difference. You've got to decide on your mental attitude and how you approach your study, which I would think is far more important. That shows up as a 36% on my little diagram. You can then think about how you actually learn and memorise things, which people often ignore, but there is a lot of memory involved in all exams. You do have things to learn. And then when you actually get into the exam room, you've got to write up your answers in the best possible way that saves time and gives a marker something easy to mark. Now, in this little snippet here, I'm really only going to look at the first two aspects of this, when to study and how to study, with maybe just a little hint of memory skills thrown in as well. When to study. Um, first of all, I would say make a plan and stick to it. I've seen so many people over the years say, um, I'll study when I've got time. Well, I'll tell you now, you will never have time because it's, it's not a pleasant thought. So given the, the opportunity, people will always find something else to do. So you need to stick it in your diary and stick to it. Decide where you're going to study, and it should be somewhere where you will have the fewest possible disruptions. Uh, and as a rough guide, somewhere where there's a television on will be bad. Time of day people sometimes ignore. Uh, I know from my personal experience, I can work really well in the mornings. Once I've had my lunch for two or three hours, I'm a complete waste of space. So if I'm going to schedule myself a time to study, I'll be looking for the morning and not early afternoon. People can sometimes get a bit macho about, oh, I worked for four hours without a break. Well, that's stupid, because the brain does get tired and it needs to have a rest every so often. So, you know, an hour is long enough for some people, 45 minutes, then force yourself to have a 10 minute break. Do something, get some fresh air, have a coffee, whatever you need to clear your head and then come back to it and you will end up working more efficiently. And build yourself a reward. Tell yourself, right, once I've done this bit of study, I'm gonna do something that I value, something that I enjoy, so that you've actually got something to look forward to. And then it will make it a little bit more pleasurable. And try and use dead time. Everybody has times in their life when they really can't be doing anything useful, like you're on a train you waiting at the dentist, something like that. So take study material with you to use those times when you really couldn't do anything else. As to how to study, generally speaking, little and often works better than a big long slog. So if you can do half an hour, three quarters of an hour, have a bit of a break, then come back, that will tend to be better than, as I say, big long bursts. What is absolutely key is that you are doing something active. Passive learning, by, by which I generally mean reading notes or reading a study pack, is probably the most ineffective way for most people to try and learn. It's what most people do because it's easy and we're all lazy. But you've got to really get things into your brain, you've got to be doing something. So if you are reading notes or a study pack, summarise it, take notes. It's not that you're going to do anything much with the notes, it's just the, the fact that you've taken those notes will make the information stick in your brain much better. Most well-written study material will have, will have examples for you to do, so do it. Don't just look at the question and then look at the answer and say, oh yeah, I, I could have done that. 
No, actually do it. And if you can get into a study group and bounce ideas and thoughts off other people, that is really effective. Things then stay in your brain much better. And an absolute key thing that most people don't do, but really is incredibly important, at the start of a study session, decide what you want to get out of it. Decide what you want to have achieved by the end. And once you've achieved that, you've finished. And you then take your reward, do something you want to do. The target mustn't be to work for two hours, because that's thinking about your input rather than your output. What your target should be is, I will have read these two chapters of my study pack, I will have summarised them with very concise notes, and I will have worked all examples and checked them to the answer. Once you've done that, you've then finished, and with that clear target in mind, you will work much more efficiently and effectively. Try it, you'll find it works. Now, the last little bit I just want to mention, because it fits in with what a lot of people ask me, is, is learning things. Now, memory skills is a massive subject in its own right, so I'm only just going to mention it very briefly now. A lot of the most effective tools on learning involve using the right-hand side of your brain rather than just the left-hand side. Accountants particularly are sort of very keen on logic lists, numbers, tends to be the nature of accountants, which psychologists refer to as the left-hand side of the brain. I don't think actually it is, but that's what people call it. And um, whereas the more creative side of your brain, which they call the right-hand side, tends to be much more important in memory. So if you can actually create stories, pictures, and use a bit of imagination, that will probably give you a much more effective recall of what you've tried to learn. Now, there are lots of memory techniques which I'm not going to go through now, might do this on a later session. But what I just want to finish with is perhaps the first of these, which is the simplest of them all, and really isn't particularly right brain, but is very important, and explains an issue that lots of students sort of come to me with as a problem. The typical comment I get is, oh, I like to leave things to the last minute. I like to learn things just before the exam, because otherwise I'll forget it. Uh, really, all people are saying is, I'd rather work later rather than sooner, because I'm lazy. And given the choice now, I'd rather do nothing. Now, I say people's justification is that, oh, if they learn things too far before the exam, they'll have forgotten them. And there is some justification behind that, but there is an answer. Psychologists have studied people and they've graphed percentage retention of difficult technical material against time from studying it. And what they've discovered, as you can just see unfolding on the screen there, is that immediately you study something, you'll remember it for a relatively short period of time, the long-term recall is pretty modest. And on the side there, if you can see the exam appearing <clears throat> on the right-hand side of my timeline, you haven't remembered anything like enough to pass that exam. The nice thing is, there is a solution. A little while, perhaps 24 or 48 hours, after that first run through, do it again. And what you'll find is, one, you remember more. Secondly, though, and more importantly, the long-term impact is much more enduring. Still not enough for the exam, so what do you do? You do it again. And this time, after three, maybe sometimes four repetitions, it's almost there in full-term memory. Now, just in case you're thinking, well, you know, I don't have, barely have time to do it once, never mind two or three times, the good thing is, the first run through takes a long time even though it appears to be the least effective. It isn't. The information is there in your head. It's just sunk down your head and you're struggling to recall it. But it is in your brain. The second and third repetitions can be much, much quicker. And all they do is just pull the material up your brain to a place where your active brain can find it. So it doesn't take long, but it's much more effective. 
And if you bear that in mind, and you know, after the first run through, you, you think you've wasted your time, you haven't. You just need to put in that little bit more effort and a couple more times, and it'll be there in long-term memory, and therefore much easier to access in the exam. Anyway, there's just a few thoughts. Hopefully you found them useful, and good luck in your exams.